All right, today the 2011 Land Rover LR4, new for 2010. This replaces the LR3 in Land Rover's lineup, and boy, is this a great off-road vehicle. Land Rover have all of that heritage rolled into one package. It'll do everything off-road. It'll give you luxury on-road with a new engine under the hood, which is as fast and as powerful as the 2009 Supercharged. This vehicle is the perfect vehicle for the farm or the opera. We're going to take a look inside and out and find out what powers this new LR4. The hood's open of the 2011 Land Rover LR4. Nate is here from Land Rover of Portland. Nate, tell me about this engine. This is going to be the new 5-liter V8 from Land Rover, co-developed with Jaguar. Produces 375 foot-pounds of torque and 375 horsepower. Uh, it's even 7% better fuel efficiency, so really an impressive motor. And they've actually increased uh, some of the other things in the engine too, haven't they? So it's 25% more torque and 25% more horsepower than last year with 7% better fuel efficiency. Now, the engines always great in the Land Rovers and they've done an awesome job of developing engines, but what Land Rover is known for is their off-road capability. And this vehicle hopefully has all of those things that the LR3 had, right? Absolutely. They've really even improved upon the uh, train response settings in a few of them, uh, lowered the center of gravity, increased the rear wheel travel as well, so this thing can really take you anywhere, which really makes us stand out in the crowd from going from point A to point B and really having no problems. So we recently tested this vehicle when we were at Mudfest, and we took it on uh, the Mudfest track and tried to see how this performed. And one of the things it does is you can actually drive it on quite a, a uneven ground, can't you? Absolutely. With that lower center of gravity, you're able to drive on such a side tilt that other vehicles are just going to flip over on. So it really makes Land Rover stand out. Now, significant changes, Nate, on the exterior package for the LR4 from the LR3. Uh, what's different? So the front clip is different. The front bumper and the placement of the fog lights. There's a two-bar theme in the grill with a Titan finish. The wheel arches are painted. You get a really kind of the angel eye effect in the headlights with the LED application. And once you get to the back, it's just sort of reflected. Exactly. You carry that through the, the rear as well. Now, along the side of the vehicle, much bolder, much squarer than I remember it. Yeah, the uh, painted fender arches really allow you to have that square appearance. And I always notice with the, with the Land Rover, the, especially the LR3 and LR4, that the roof line isn't smooth. Absolutely. So you have the stepped roof, which really allows for that stadium seating inside so that everybody can get a perspective on the action. And the way to tell that is to take it on a safari. I would suggest someone like Kenya, and then you can see all the giraffes and gazelle that you want. If you're sitting in the back seat, your eye level is the same or higher than the driver who is in the front seat. Now, it also has a split opening tailgate, right? Absolutely. Really incredibly engineered in that you're going to be able to be out of the elements while you're getting stuff in and out. The asymmetrical design, when you're turning backwards, allows you to see even lower and also to to reach in further as it's lowered. Today on the interior, there's been some significant changes. Absolutely. There's the addition of a thin film transistor between your gauges, which is something the new Range Rovers have as well, brought over from the concept side of the industry for the LR4. So between the gauges, basically, you have sort of a, a TV screen almost that gives you information. What sort of information do you display on this? You can have a speed warning. You can actually check your oil from that. There's no dipstick in the engine this year, so everything is really up to date, and it's basically like a high-def computer monitor between your gauges. And then what else has changed on the vehicle? They've added uh, just softer materials throughout. The steering wheel has a heating element. There's a 30-gig hard drive that pushes the flash-based navigation along with the portable audio interface. You can hook up your iPod, MP3, other sort of music device. And uh, some other aesthetic changes on the uh, inside, too. Absolutely. They've moved your train response to a more ergonomic position. They've reduced the buttons by about half. Of course, that nice analog clock in the middle makes this look like a luxury British club. I know that from talking to Land Rover, a lot of their uh, modeling of the interior of their vehicles comes from uh, yachts and yacht clubs. So they take a look at what goes in there and some of the double stitching, some of the soft touch stuff. It's really brought out the elegance of the interior of this car. A beautiful inside, but why should you buy a 2011 LR4? Well, it's not hard to come up with a list of whys to buy for the LR4, but let's start with the fact that residual values in this vehicle are great. Once you buy one of these, it's a true investment. Now, let's talk about European luxury. If you're going to go out and buy another European SUV and get it to the same standards with all the extras that this comes with, you're going to pay around $120,000. This, $56,000. And then you get that great off-roading. Land Rover have heritage. They go test it in the hills of Wales in some of the worst conditions around the world, and this vehicle always comes through head of the pack. In fact, if you go on a Land Rover Expedition, you'll often find that these vehicles are towing out other people on the off-road courses. Now let's take a look at the MSRP.
The 2011 Land Rover LR4 has a 5-litre V8 engine, a 6-speed automatic transmission, and its base price, $47,650. Our in-studio as tested model, $56,950. You'll get 12 miles a gallon in the city and 17 on the highway.